Welcome back. Today we're going to be going over one of the most essential parts of the Shopify dashboard, how to add a product. So arguably one of the most important places on the Shopify dashboard is your edit products page. This is where you're going to add all the information for the products that you're selling. So I'm going to hop over to the dashboard and I'm going to show you how to set up a product. So if we're on the home page here and we click on products on the left hand side, it's going to give us a list of all the current products that are added into our store. It's also going to open up a menu along the left hand side of a bunch of different things that we can do. Most of the stuff after all products is organization, so transfers coming in from other places like suppliers, inventory is for the current inventory of the products that you're doing, collections we went over, uh, and gift cards we're going to go over in another video. Now I've also gone and created a video that explains how to bulk import and export products using a CSV file. Uh, I suggest you go and check that out if you're looking to import a bunch of products. In this video what we're going to do is we're going to go over how to add a single product to your store. So we're going to hit add product and it's going to take us to a page that's going to have a number of options on it. So the first one is going to be the title. Now when you're choosing your title it's important to pick something that is going to be uh, descriptive as well as it's going to explain not only to you but to the end user of what it is that you're actually going to be selling and the reason it's so important to do this is because Shopify is actually going to generate out the handle uh, for the URL that it's going to use when you put the title in so let me show you what I mean so if I go we're gonna do a product for our plushie that we're selling so Bucky plushie from Sunbowl Okay, I'm actually going to put in cute Bucky Plushie from Sumble, a couple extra keywords in there in order to improve my SEO right off the bat. The next is the description. Now for this description, I'm just going to grab some uh, hipster Ipsum, which is hipster version of Lorem Ipsum, um, and I'm going to put that in our uh, description just so that we have something in there. Now, most, now the next part is the images and now image section you can either click on upload image where it's going to give you a dialog box where you can go through and select your images through your file browser or you can drag and drop images in here. Now I've got a demo store uh, folder already created with a bunch of images in it. I'm going to take these images and just drag them straight over top of the upload and it's going to let them upload. It's now going to go through and process all of the images and put them on the site. Now after we go and save this product, we're going to actually go and save it. We'll be able to go in and edit the images and change them with the onboard editor that's inside Shopify. So it's going to go and upload each one of those images. So we'll wait for all the check marks to go through. Okay, so now that it's finished uploading all of our images, we now can go and modify them. Now, Shopify noticed that because of the metadata that was in one of these photos, that it needed to actually rotate it. So um, it's gone and done that for us. Now, if it hadn't auto-rotated it, what we can do is after we've hit the save button, you'll see this little pencil icon has shown up, and that will allow us to launch the editor. And in the editor, we would have been able to enhance, crop, resize, chain the orientation. So if we wanted to rotate it to the right, to the left, we could do that. We could mirror it if that's something that we were wanting to do. Or we can just hit cancel because we're not actually going to. We can add some text to it. So there are options available inside um, the editor if you want to make some small adjustments to it. Um, we've got a couple of duplicate images in here that we're going to now remove so we can hit the delete button and it's going to remove them from our product and then now that the product has been created we have an additional option which is add image from URL so you can go in here and you can paste it in, in an image that you have uh, found on the internet or if you're copying it from a previous website it will download it and import it directly in there you don't have to go and download them yourself and import them making it a little bit quicker because it'll be server to server instead of uh, directly on your page. So if you're on a slow internet connection, it's something to keep in mind. Okay, so now that we've done title, description, images, let's start talking about the pricing. So price um, allows us to put in the price that it's currently being sold at. So we're going to be selling this at $15. Not $150, $15. The compare at price is what it used to if you have something on sale. So you would update price to be the new price and if it used to be $20, which is what we used to sell it for, 
we would put that at parent price. Now this is a new field that's been added to Shopify. Um, it's cost per item. So it, this is a field that is not publicly shown on the front end of the site, but it does allow you to keep uh, inventory of what things cost when you're doing your costing for all of your uh, products. So I'm gonna put in here, there was a cost of $5 for each Pucky. And then auto generates out the margins so that you know what your margins are at. So when you're adjusting your price, you can set your margin. Say we wanted a 30% um, a margin, we could go and do that, or whatever kind of margin we want, we can go and do that. Really, really helpful. Um, next, charging taxes on the product, whether the product uh, is applied for taxes or not. Um, and then the inventory level. So this inventory is going to be SUN, Bucky One is the the inventory. We don't have a barcode for this uh, item, but if you have a barcode, you can go and put this in. Uh, and the next is your inventory policy. So whether this requires you to track the inventory or whether you want to have a product that doesn't have tracked inventory and you can keep on selling it. Typically in a digital product type of situation, you wouldn't have the inventory. But we do have an inventory for um, this product. We got a hundred of them. And then we can also select allow customers to purchase when this product becomes out of stock. So if you're doing a pre-sale, if you're going in and selling items ahead of time, what you would do is you would set the inventory to zero and then allow customers to purchase beyond the current stock level. And then the negative amount that you have is the amount of products that you need to fulfill. When they come in, you would fulfill those and then you would put your regular inventory level back up. Okay. Moving on to shipping. Shipping, uh, if it is a physical product, it's a really good idea to add the weight in here. You need the weight added to your product if you're going to be doing any real-time shipping calculations because shipping calculations require uh, physical size as well as weight. Um, you want to make sure that you add all of these items in here. So we do have our weight in pounds, actually. Uh, pounds, and it's 0.25 pound. And then if we have an international customs code. The next one is fulfillment service. Now, because I don't have any fulfillment services set up on my Shopify store, this drop-down menu has been populated. But as I add more fulfillment services to my store, this will now become available. Everything inside Shopify is content dependent, so you have to have the content there in order for it to show it up inside of a drop-down menu. So if something is missing, it means that the content needs to be added. Okay, um, now down to variants. So variants, if we want to add a variant, so if we have multiple sizes of our Bucky plushie, now in our case, we only have one option. We only have one uh, variant in here. Um, I'm gonna go into more details about how variants work and what the limitations are in another video, um, but this is where you go and add your variant options to it. Okay, down below we have our SEO, which has now been auto-generated for us. As you can see, we can our title has been stuck into the search engine preview, but also you can see that it's been added in as a handle. All right, let's hop back up to the top for a moment, um, and we're gonna go over a couple more options. So we have our product availability, which says which channels uh, are available. As you add channels to the left-hand side of your Shopify store, these channels will become available and you can manage them. The only one that you can manage a publication date on is on your online store. So um, the online store allows you to hit the publication date um, and say if you're doing a preview of a product and you don't want it to go live on your store uh, until you know the 1st of February, if you will, then uh, this is where you would set that up. Okay. Uh, the last couple pieces that we have here, organization, these are for internal purposes, but they are viewable from the public side if you need them to be. So the first is a product type, so you can hit the product type and it'll pull up all the product types that you've typed in before. Um, for this product, we're just going to say it's an accessory. Um, we're going to pick the vendor and we're going to write in us as the vendor. Um, when you go and save this, this is what's going to auto-populate all the rest of the fields. So as we went over in the collection video when I was saying that vendors need to be added, this is where you would go and do that. And then you have the option to quickly add these to a collection if you need to. You can double click on here and add it to collection. I only have one collection set up, so it's on the homepage. And then finally, tags. 
tags are used to internally organize objects inside of Shopify. So if you have something like uh, in stock, sold, if you want to be able to organize your products in a different fashion, something that is not just dependent on product type or vendor, this is where you would go and do that. And that's everything you need to know about products. Once you hit the save button, uh, your product is ready to go and you can go and view it on your online store. Thanks for coming by. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if that's something that you're into, and we'll see you guys in the next one.